Russia has invaded Ukraine. I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. Russia has made a terrible decision. It's in line with a warmonger mentality. They've invaded Ukraine, and this isn't even their first act of aggression towards Ukrainian territory. In 2014, you may recall they annexed Crimea, and now they're back for the big prize. I don't think we have to spend too much time talking about why this was such a terrible decision. One would hope that in 2022, developed countries would be moving away from warfare and towards building a global society, advancing the human race, using our resources productively. But instead, we're being dragged in. We're isn't exactly the right term, because Ukraine, for the most part right now, is left alone, but the possibility of escalation exists for everyone. Being dragged into this hellscape, essentially, where lives are being needlessly lost, resources needlessly wasted, and perhaps international relations being set back a generation. This is terrible for everyone. Now, in this particular situation, February 24th was the day that Russia did launch their full-on invasion of Ukraine. And this is the largest conventional warfare operation in Europe since World War II. That's astounding. I find that the figures are shocking as well. It's almost hard to comprehend how so much casualties could have happened in just a couple of days. Now, the data is all over the place, and each side has their own story to tell, but here's how things seem to have played out thus far. Russia has suffered over 4,000 casualties. That's a lot of dead people. And further, 200 soldiers have been captured. So they weren't killed, they were taken alive. Russia has had 146 of their tanks destroyed. Think about how much that cost. And 27 aircraft have been shut down. Now, on Ukraine's side, the numbers are reportedly a bit better. They've only had about 100 soldiers killed, which is still a travesty. But they're taking civilian tolls as well. 200 people have lost their life. Another 1,000 are injured. And that's just regular folk. Now, when it comes to their machinery, Ukraine has lost 67 tanks and 7 combat aircrafts have been destroyed. The clips that we're seeing on social media are not at the forefront of the action, usually, but even those are pretty harrowing. There are videos of abandoned stores where people are just running to to take as much food as they can so they can survive for the next couple days. There is video of people cramming into the subway system because they're afraid of artillery raining down on their heads if they stay at home. There's videos of dead people just all along the street, whether Russian or Ukrainian. People injured, houses destroyed, families separated, young men being forced to join the army. Total insanity. Now, if you're going to look purely just at the figures, the numbers here, Russia has suffered greater losses thus far. Ukraine is in fact fighting back somewhat effectively, but the golden question is, will that continue? I certainly hope so, and I think much of the international community shares that sentiment. There are some concerning factors here though, such as Russia attacking more civilians and community areas. That could spell great peril. Further, we know Russia has greater military strength, and it's to a large degree. They're not even close. So while they've suffered greater losses so far, from the first couple days, they have a lot left in the tank. Can Ukraine hold out without aid? I'm not so sure. Now to rewind the conversation a little bit, a question that's commonly asked is why did Putin even decide to invade Ukraine? What's the benefit? He suffered much loss via reputation, via economic sanctions, and even military debt toll and loss of equipment. So why? Well, reportedly there are two factors that drove his decision, but who really knows the whole truth? Maybe there's a third or a fourth that are floating around in his head. So, first of all, Putin supposedly viewed NATO and the enlargement of that group as a serious threat to his country's security, and he demanded that Ukraine be legally prohibited from joining the military alliance, and he was triggered when they were asking to and the NATO alliance was considering it. So, because of that, supposedly, he decided to take an offensive maneuver here. Second, Putin has talked and been 
putting out statements about restoring some Soviet Union era properties, such as unifying various states into one entity and getting back their place on the world stage. They want to increase their global power. Now, the Soviets were, once upon a time, arguably the second strongest global force, and that's during the Cold War era. America and them, the top two players. Today, that's no longer the case with the likes of China surpassing them, so there could be some nostalgia for power there, and I imagine somebody like Putin being very concerned about that, wanting that respect, wanting that place on the world stage not to be crapped on, and therefore he's willing to risk quite a lot to get it. In response to the invasion, there's been a widespread international condemnation, including new sanctions that were imposed on Russia by various global partners and entities. And even at the level of the citizen, there have been global protests that have been taking place everywhere, even within Russia itself. Mass protest. And how did Putin respond to his own people telling him, hey, this is a bad idea? Well, you're arrested. And further... I've read that there are new laws coming out in Russia where if you're sharing information that favors Ukraine, for example, you can be tried with treason, which comes with a 20-year jail sentence. And that's quite frightening, but I do hope the people of Russia do find the courage to continue to speak up, and that's obviously a big ask. A leader like Putin, who is draconian, authoritarian, and not afraid to lock you up or even make you disappear if you oppose him, that takes a lot of courage, and you do have to think about the safety of yourself and your family. But truly, the only way to depose Putin, to get rid of him, is from the inside. The people rising up and saying, we need something better. Coming in from the outside, that's quite scary, with a nuclear power as large as Russia. So we do have to do what we can to encourage the people of Russia to continue to push for change. Further, there have been many countries who have provided Ukraine with military arms and other material support, but they've stopped short of actually sending in troops because there is a true threat of escalation that we should talk about here. There are many people who seem to be under the illusion that America, NATO, the rest of Europe can just put all of their army units on the border there, start killing Russian troops, and we'd be done with the conflict. Somebody like Putin wouldn't take that, and that's why there's much caution here. As I mentioned, Russia is a major nuclear-armed state. Right now, it's between Ukraine and Russia. It's a tragedy, it's terrible, it's a giant versus a small country. But the threat of escalation is something we all have to keep in mind. The stakes have never been higher. America joins the fray, Russia puts more troops in, they start killing each other. Maybe Putin starts losing. He starts fearing for his position of power, the presidency of Russia. He takes it as a grave insult. He's warned you not to do this. Well, somebody as unhinged as that may flip the switch. He may hit the big red button and start shooting off nuclear warheads that can hit a ton of different countries. Then what? The other nuclear armed states, America, France, the UK, have to retaliate. And then we end up in a nuclear hellscape where life is ceasing to be able to exist. It's a real possibility. Armageddon. That's why dealing with an entity as dangerous as Russia has to be approached carefully. And that's why I do advocate for an internal change. The people of Russia putting in place a leader who this wouldn't be possible with. It's pretty obvious that war is a true terror. And we need to move beyond it if we ever hope to advance as a species. Right now, in this current situation, Russia needs to back off. That's the only valid solution here. And I hope we have not reached a point of no return, at least in the mind of Putin. Consider for a second that after all is said and done, he will be a war criminal, hunted by various countries and organizations and perhaps facing a financially ruined economy in Russia, given all the sanctions levied against him. And people are already rising up. Imagine what would happen in the aftermath of this. At what point does a leader say, screw it, and just goes all in because they feel like there really isn't much left to lose, and especially 
a leader with so much means for destruction, like Putin himself, it becomes quite the dangerous dynamic. There has to be a path backwards here, away from the cliff. And this is the complexity of the current warfare situation. Think about the potential outcomes here, and how acceptable and what type of byproducts would come from them. Situation 1, Russia does in fact take over Ukraine. Well, that would be quite the shock internationally. And I would imagine that it could trigger something akin to another world war. That can't happen. Especially because it would set a terrible precedent for other world powers who are keen on doing things like that. Another possibility. Russia realizes that there's far too much of a resistance here. They're losing too many troops. The financial sanctions hurt. They have to pull out. Well, knowing Putin, he's not going to do that and look weak. He's probably going to meet with the entity of Ukraine and try to work out an agreement where he looks like he won. So he can go back to his country and decree victory. What would he ask for? Probably those two rebellion states that have offered their support to Russia. Would the Ukrainian government accept that? I'm not so sure. That seems to be something of a path to peace, but one that is complicated. One that could itself still set a terrible precedent. Another outcome, Russia gets expelled from the country by force. Well, will Putin let that happen? Or will he keep escalating? He has the means to do it. Then you have to consider things like the possibilities of interventionism. Does NATO get involved? Well, how far would that propel the conflict? What heights would we reach? Does NATO not get involved? Well, does that then make more likely the fact of Russia taking over Ukraine? There are a ton of possibilities here, and they all have some lesser or greater degree of concern. Honestly, the best thing that could have happened was for the war to have never began, for egos and reputations never to be staked on this to begin with. But now that they are, it's trickier to find a path out that's going to lead to harmony. And if we do want to prevent needless suffering and death, I'm fairly convinced that Putin has to be driven away. And further, this is actually the crucial point, he has to be replaced as the head of the state as we talked about. But before that happens, there's going to be turmoil. Is he going to willingly let that occur if he senses it? I don't think so. And I do hope that there are safeguards and independent people in influential positions to prevent rapid escalation. I do have a concern that Putin is the only one with the ability to declare or not to declare a nuclear war. If that's the case, then his whims are dictating the future of the human race, essentially. But if there are safeguards and generals who are independent, who can say, no, we're not going to do that, Putin is losing it, we have to get rid of him. And him throwing a hissy fit on the way out, we're not going to let that occur. Well, then there is some cushion there. But still, it's slim because I don't think Putin's the kind of guy to, pe to put people in those positions unless they're yes-men. A man like Vladimir Putin is simply not suited for a modern, world-building, world peaceful project. His ambitions of domination are just not acceptable in today's world. And I do hope that war leaders can navigate a successful path forward here. I can't help but feel we're on the precipice of something bad. Now, as always, I'll keep you up to date on the latest, and with that, it does bring us to the end of our conversation for today. If you enjoy the content, be sure to leave a review and share to help us grow. And you can find me online at perryplatform.org and on social media at perryplatform. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon.